Getting clear on your niche is one of the hardest parts of launching a coaching business. It can be so easy to just feel stuck or confused or overwhelmed at this stage of the journey. Maybe you're a new coach, you're just getting started, you know you need clarity on your niche, but you're not sure where to begin. Or maybe you've been coaching for a while, your niche is unclear, you're feeling pulled in a couple of different directions, and you know it's costing you clients. Either way, if any of that sounds familiar, this video is for you. My name is Jason Moss. I'm a multi six figure business coach, and I've helped thousands of coaches around the world launch and grow their businesses. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my proven four step process that I use to help all my clients get clear on exactly what their niche is so you can get on with the work that you're called to do as a coach and actually start signing clients. But before we dive in, getting clear on your niche is one of four keys to success when it comes to launching a profitable coaching business. And if you wanna know what the other three steps are so you can make sure to have have everything in place you need to create success as a coach, I put together this free client attraction guide that walks through those four steps in detail. You can get it completely free. Click the link above or below to go download that right now. So before we dive into helping you get clear on what your niche actually is, I wanna start by answering a, a seemingly simple question, which is what the heck is a niche? If you've you know, never thought about this before, or maybe you think you know what a niche is, super important to get clear on this first, otherwise it's very difficult to figure out what your niche actually is. So what the heck is a niche? Well, the best way that I can describe this is a niche is a specific group of people with a clear gap. Another way of thinking about this is it's a group of people who are at point A, and they want to be at point B. Now, that could be lots of different things. For example, I work with coaches. My niche is I work with a lot of coaches who are launching businesses. And the gap is I'm at a full-time job and I want to be coaching full-time so I can be running my own business and have freedom and be working for myself and making great money, setting my own schedule and not be beholden to some corporate like boss and, and all of that. And that's the gap in their life between having no coaching business, working full-time for somebody else and being a full-time coach. It's an example of a gap. You might be a relationship coach. Maybe the gap is I'm in a partnership and I feel like I'm unhappy and I feel like we have lots of conflict. And the gap is between our life today as conflicted partners and a really fulfilling, rich, vibrant relationship. And that that's the gap between point A and point B. Very important to realize that as a coach, your coaching business exists to close a gap for a specific group of people. If we don't have a gap to close, no one's going to pay you. People pay you not for coaching, but to help close a gap in their life. And so the first First thing to remember is that probably the most important key to success as a coach. The biggest reason that I see coaches fail is because they're like, hey, I want to go out and be a coach, but they don't take the time to figure out a group of people with a clear gap that they can help solve or help bridge through their coaching. And so they're trying to sell coaching rather than realizing, well, hey, you know, I exist to, to meet a need for a, a group of people out there. That's why people are going to pay me. So the first thing is we got to get clear on what that need actually is and what those group of people actually are. Another question you might ask, and I hear this a lot from coaches, is why why do I need a niche? You know, maybe maybe you can do a lot of things. Maybe as a life coach, you could help a lot of different people. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see with new coaches out there is they're trying to serve everyone. It's like I go on their website and it's like, I offer health coaching and relationship coaching and finance coaching, business coaching, and, and like 10 different things. It's like going to like a buffet and you got all these different options. Why doesn't that work? And why do you need to choose a specific group of people? Why not just try to serve everyone? The truth is we live in a very busy world and there are no shortage of coaches out there. If you go online, you search for coaches, and they're, they're hundreds of thousands of coaches. And the good news is I think there's more than enough room for you in the coaching world. But in order to stand out in today's world, one of the biggest keys to success is having a very narrow and specific message that really resonates deeply with a small group of people. If you go out there and you try to serve everyone, if you don't really have a niche, or if your niche is super broad and it's just like, I'm gonna help people with their finances and life and the, their business and, and relationships and everything, it's very difficult to show up in your market in a way with a narrow enough message that really resonates with the level of depth that you're going to need to resonate on to cut through the noise, to stand out versus take a look at this video. I help coaches, right? This is this is what I do. This is an entire video about getting clear on your niche as a coach. If you're a coach who's watching this, who's in the stage of your journey, probably launching your business or in the early stages of your journey where you're watching this, you're probably thinking, wow, this is really relevant to me. I'm still watching this because I feel like Jason is speaking to me. And the only reason that I'm able to do that is because my niche is narrow enough that I don't have a message that's trying to you know, be everything forever. 
everyone. It would be very difficult for me to, to create this resonance and connection with you if I was trying to make a video that was relevant for not just coaches, but also for e-commerce businesses and also for you know, other service-based businesses. And it just wouldn't re resonate and land in the same way versus me having that clarity and that specificity and, and really being narrow in terms of who I do actually serve means that you feel, hopefully, if you're still watching this, a deeper connection with me. And that's one of the reasons why we pay attention to people because probably one of the biggest reasons is because their message actually stands out. So you do it by being specific. So now you know what a niche is, why you need one. The next question you're probably asking is, how do I get clear on what my niche actually is? So I've got this four-step process that I take all of my clients through. It's pretty simple. And this is gonna go a long way towards you getting clear on what your niche actually is. So walk through this process. You can actually pause this video if you wanna do these steps live with me. I think this is gonna be a great thing, honestly, for you to do rather than just consuming information. And you can pause and unpause the video and we'll kind of walk through this together. So step number one is I want you to open up a document on your computer or grab a blank sheet of paper, something to take notes with. And I want you to write down all of your skills. So all of the things that you have expertise in, that you're skilled at. So maybe you're a really good cook, or maybe you have a lot of knowledge when it comes to personal development or trauma healing or NLP. Just write down, just brain dump. We don't have to worry about judging anything or editing anything. I just want you to make a list of all of your skills, all the skills that you can think of, even the ones that you're just like, I don't even see how this relates to coaching. Put it all down on the list. Let's start there. That's step number one. So pause the video if you're doing this live with me, make that list and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so we've got step number one done. Hopefully you've got that list of all your skills. Step number two is I want you to make a new column or grab a new sheet of paper, or open up a new document, some other place where you can you know, write something. And I want you to make a list of all the things that you're really passionate about. So this could be, I just love wildlife photography. Like I, this is not me personally. I appreciate wildlife photography. I'm not super passionate about it personally, but that could be your passion, right? So make a list of all the things that you're really passionate about. Pause this video and come back to this when you're ready. Okay, so step number three, once we have that list of your skills and your passions, now here's where things get a little creative. Step three is I want you to make a list and brainstorm potential groups of people that have problems or desires or needs or gaps that you can close using your skills or passions. So for example, maybe you wrote down, I'm really good at cooking and I'm really passionate about veganism and just the, the vegan lifestyle and how important that is for the planet and our health. So maybe in step three, we'd be thinking, okay, well, what are groups of people that might have a gap that we can we can close with those skills and those, those passions? Well, maybe it's single moms who are really busy. They've got young kids at home and they work all day and they come home and they're just like, I, I don't have time to cook. I know that I, I want my kids to eat healthy. I believe, uh, you know, in veganism. I feel like that would be great, but I just, I don't have the time to do the research and think about what I'm gonna eat and all that stuff. And so the gap, is I know that what I really want is to eat healthy and to have healthy uh, food for my kids. But I just, I feel like where I'm at today, I'm just stressed down, I'm overwhelmed. I, you know, I'm working all day and I don't have the time to be able to prepare. So that's an example of a gap. So what we wanna do is, and again, I want you to just brainstorm. Don't judge any of these. You know, we don't have to like put on that part of your mind that's gonna say, oh, that isn't good or I don't think that's a good idea. Just brainstorm, let your mind go wild. And, spend, and this might take a little bit of time, but coming up again with groups of people that have gaps gaps in their life that you can fill based on your passion and your skills. Okay, great. So we've got that list of all of your potential niches. That's really what step three is about. Now, step four, the last phase of this is really like a back of the napkin kind of ranking. So when it comes to choosing a good niche, there's really three things that I pay very close attention to. The first and probably the most important key to picking a really good niche is that we want to make sure that that niche has a high desire to want to make a change in their life. There's all sorts of gaps that every single one of us have in our lives. And there are gaps that we feel a high desire to want to close usually because there's a lot of pain associated with either not closing them or things staying as they are. And there's also gaps that we have a pretty low desire to close. For example, <laughs> here are these lovely slippers from Ugg. They're very comfortable, but I've had them for a couple years and they're, they're kind of trash. Like they're, I wear them out Outside, you know, they're they're suede. They're not, I don't think they're supposed to be worn outside. The truth is like, I need a new pair of slippers. That is a gap in my life. The gap between where I am today, wearing these two year old slippers that are kind of ratty and my life with a fresh new pair of slippers. Why have I not gone out and bought those slippers? I have the money to buy them. It's a, it's a clear gap in my life. It's just cause I don't really care that much. It's because in the priority list of things in my mind, like buying a new pair of slippers is like a hundred down on the list. If you had to rank like on a scale 
scale of one to 10, my desire to want to buy a new pair of slippers and close that gap, it'd be like a four. So the first thing I want you to do in each of these niches that you've come up with is I want you to rank for each niche on a scale of one to 10, what is this person's or this group's desire to want to close that gap? 10 would be like, if I don't close this gap right now, there are gonna be really negative consequences in my life. I need to make a change this second. And one would be like, I just don't care. That's step number one here. Second thing I pay attention to is your passion. So when you think about waking up every day and serving this group of people and being surrounded by these people, how excited do you feel? How energized do you feel about helping people close this gap in their life? Chances are there are certain groups of people that have you know gaps that you feel really excited about closing. Like I love working with coaches and I love helping coaches launch and grow businesses. I just love teaching people how to, how to get clients and how to market and all of that stuff. It's just really exciting to me. I could talk about it all day. Even if I wasn't getting paid, I'd still love it. And and so for me, like my passion level on a scale of one to 10 is like probably like a, like an eight or a nine, like it's it's pretty high. Versus there are other groups of people or other or other gaps that when you think about, you know, the the idea of you waking up every day and, and doing that work, you're probably like, ah, this just doesn't fill my cup. It doesn't feel exciting to me. So the next thing I want you to do for each of these potential niches that you came up with in step three is I want you to rank on a scale of one to 10, how passionate you are about doing that work and helping those people. Now, one other thing to pay attention to here is it's not just about the problem or the gap that you're closing, it's also the people themselves. My first coaching business, I, I you know scaled a six-figure coaching business online helping musicians. Nothing against musicians. I love, you know, I, I appreciate musicians. I am a musician, I studied music in college. But I think what I realized pretty, pretty early on in that business was like a business for me that was built around helping musicians. I, I'll just be very honest, musicians have never really been like my people. I'm a little bit maybe more like analytical and more more like in my head. I like musicians, but the idea of like being around them all day and building an entire business around them didn't, after a couple of years, I figured out like didn't really make sense for me. So one of the questions I wish I would have asked myself early on is how passionate am I about the idea of just being surrounded by musicians every day? So when I'm asking you this question about how passionate you are about serving this group of people, we're not just talking about the gap, we're also talking about the people themselves. So for each of these niches, scale of one to 10, how passionate are you about uh, showing up and, and serving in this way? And then the last thing I pay attention to, this is super important as well, is ability to pay. So on a scale of one to 10, how likely is it that this person has the ability to pay you high ticket for what you do? When I say high ticket, I'm talking about a coaching package that is typically a couple thousand dollars or more. There are niches out there that have clear gaps in their life that really wanna make a change that you're gonna be really excited about working with, but they just don't have money. For example, you know, maybe you're a career coach and when it comes to helping people, if you wanna help people who just got fired uh, at their jobs, probably not a great niche because a lot of those people are gonna be in like scarcity mode and they're just like, hey, I just need some financial stability and I don't have the money to invest because I don't have money coming in right now. So that's a good example of a niche that might really wanna work with you. But what I see, and this is a big gap that I see with a lot of coaches, is they might choose a niche that they're really excited about working with that really has a clear gap, that has a desire to close that gap, but just doesn't have the money to pay them. And so you end up getting on all these calls with people who really wanna work with you, but they just, they just can't pay you. And ability to pay, this is a big piece that we, we really wanna pay attention to when it comes to choosing the right niche. On a scale of one to 10 for each of these niches, the last thing you wanna do is rank, how likely is this group to have the ability to pay me high ticket for what I do as a coach? So after you've gone through this process, you should have for each of those niches that you've chosen, you should have three rankings. Ranking for desire, ranking for your passion, and a ranking for ability to pay. And what you can do is you can add up the scores for each of those numbers in each of the niches and come up with like a total score for each one. And this is kind of like just a back of the napkin way of of ranking how good these niches are and how likely these niches are to be successful for you. And generally, the higher the score, the better. Now, this is not like a science. You wanna pay attention to your gut and your intuition on this too, but this will give you some guidance when it comes to choosing the right niche for you. Now, there are a few things I want you to keep in mind when it comes to getting clear on your niche. The first and probably the most important thing is you're not married to your niche. This is not like you making a lifelong commitment. So one of the biggest things that I see trips coaches up in the early days when it comes to choosing their niche is there's this weightiness that we place around getting this right. This idea like, oh, I'm choosing my niche. 
niche. It feels like such an important decision. The truth is your niche can change at any moment and it probably will. I've changed my niche multiple times. Like I said, I started out serving musicians. Now I'm a business coach. It'll probably change again at some point. As you evolve and change in your life, your niche is gonna change too because your business is really just a reflection of you and who you are and you're growing and evolving and changing. So it's normal that things are gonna change. And also you might you might try a direction for a couple months and then through trying things, you're gonna learn what works and what doesn't and what you feel excited about and what you don't. The truth is that the way that you get to clarity is by putting half-baked things out in the world, by showing up when you're not sure and just by experimenting. So if you feel like 70, 80% sure that, that a niche that you're thinking about choosing is the right one, but you're not 100% sure, that's good enough. Go put yourself out there. Go start creating content. Go have conversations. Go start selling things. And in 30, 60, 90 days, step back and reevaluate. And you're going to get so much more clarity through that than you are by, you know, watching another one of these videos, spending like another three, three days or three weeks or three months, like thinking this through. So just remember, you're not married to your niche. You can, you can change things at any moment. And most decisions in business are reversible. So we can take all that pressure off and just say, you know, what feels like the right decision right now? The other thing is just to normalize, it's gonna feel unclear at first. Like, it's funny because I'm recording this video about how to get clear on your niche. And I know that there's gonna be, like, you might walk away from this video feeling like, I, I kind of know what my niche is, but I don't feel 100% clear. And rather than seeking clarity, at least through thinking, which is what most of us do, the better choice is let me move forward when I'm unclear. Clarity comes through action, doesn't come through overthinking things. So the one of the best things that you can do is just put yourself out there when you're not sure and start showing up and you're gonna get feedback that's gonna help you figure out whether or not you're in the right lane. So just to normalize that this is probably not gonna be clear for the first like six to 12 months of your business. Most of the new coaches that I work with in the early days of their journey, there's a process of like, we're feeling things out, we're trying different things. There's it's very normal to have a couple of pivots like early on. Your niche is gonna evolve and shift quite a bit in the early stages of the journey until you kind of hone in on something that, that feels right, that works for you, that works for your clients, that people are actually wanting to buy, that takes a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of experimentation. Don't freak out if you're not super clear right now. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to move forward. All right, so hopefully this video gave you some clarity, at least enough clarity to be able to go out there and start taking action. But remember I mentioned earlier, getting clear on your niche is really one of four steps to success as a coach. And if you're a coach who wants clients, you, you ultimately wanna get on contract to full time. You want to be making real money, transforming lives and helping others and making an impact. And you want to know what those, those extra three steps are so you can have everything in place in order to do that. I recommend downloading my free client attraction guide. You can click the link above or below that walks through those four steps in detail, everything you're gonna need to have in place in order to create success as a coach. Now, before you go, I'd love to hear down below, what's your niche? What are you thinking? Right now, we don't have to be 100% clear on it, but I, I'd love to just hear from you. Like right now at this stage of the journey, what are you feeling called to in terms of the, the group of people that you, you feel called to serve as a coach? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And um, we've got so many awesome videos coming on this channel too. So if you're, you're a coach who wants more tips and guidance and resources to help you launch or grow your business and get more clients, click that subscribe button down below as well. And you'll be notified when we've got new videos coming. Um, so until then, hope you have an awesome day, week, Good luck on getting clear on your niche and uh, I'll see you soon.